Hello everybody, my name is Belen. Um, I'm the co-founder of Miss Bao. Today I'm going to be showing you guys um, three of my favorite holiday drinks. Uh, we're going to be doing two cocktails and one mocktail today. So um, let's get started. <laughs> So the first one I'm going to be doing is called an apple teeny. Um, the reason I really like it for the holidays is because it's green color and it's just really festive. Um, so first you need a coupe glass for your martini. And I like to cheer, uh, chill my um, coupe glass a little bit. So I would put a few cubes of ice in here and chill it with some cold water. Okay, and I'll have that set aside. Just let it sit for one to two minutes, it'll be fine. And then you need your um, alcohol, that's a cocktail. So the two, um, the main, our oh, two main alcohols you need, one is vodka. The second one is your apple liqueur. I picked this green apple liqueur, just I really love the color. And you also need a, here we go, an apple brandy. It really gonna add the apple, the natural apple flavor into your drinks. So, this is gonna be a shake drink. So you also need a shaker with you. And um, it doesn't matter you fill the ice first or last. So um, I like to do my with the alcohol first and the ice. Um, so first you need uh, one and a half ounce of our vodka. And then you need one ounce of your apple liqueur. The last thing would be a half ounce of your favorite apple brandy. Okay, so now you have uh, three of your main alcohol ingredients in your shaker. Then you're gonna fill the shaker with some ice. I'm gonna break this ice first. <laughs> you want a lot of ice in here so it can get nice and cold. Okay, then. You put your shaker together, make sure it's nice and tight. It won't go loose. And then you shake it for 15 seconds. Okay. I always have problem over this. <laughs> okay, here we go. <sighs> That's a lot of work. <laughs> Okay, so here is your apple teeny. If you like, you can also do some garnish with it. So I would use an apple. And I'll cut it in half first. And then I'm gonna thin slice the apple. So I cut it this way and I just make three very thin slices. Sliced apple. I like to fend them out like this and have a cocktail picks and just kind of like gently poke through all three and fend them out and make them look nice. And here's your apple teeny. Okay. 
Okay, so the next one I'm going to be making is uh, tea infused cocktail. Uh, we have a lot of tea. Um, we have some tea infused cocktail on our menu as well uh, for this season. Um, our tea infused cocktail is uh, the Earl Grey Juniper Twist. So it's made uh, um, with the Earl Grey infused tea. Um, tea vodka uh, is our tea gin um, with um, citrus juice and um, uh, bitters in that. And uh, we also have our favorite matcha beer, which is also we, we, we say it's a tea infused cocktail. And uh, today I'm going to be showing you guys um, something called uh, the Earl Grey French 75. So it's made uh, with tea infused gin here and our festive sparkling wine right here and simple syrup. I'm going to take these here and simple syrup and some lemon juice. So the, how do you make simple syrup at home is you add one part water, one part sugar, and just bring them to boil and just cook it gently until it's all, the, all the sugars are dissolved. And then you get your simple syrup. Just let it chill and you can use it for your cocktail or your favorite mocktails. Um, so how do you make Earl Grey infused gin? Uh, usually at the restaurant what we do is uh, we use one um, tablespoon of tea to 500 ml of alcohol and we let them sit in the bottle for up to five days to uh, get its color. So this is the kind of color you're looking for. You don't want it to be too dark, but you definitely want the color to look like your tea, you know? So um, here's our Earl Grey tea that we used to infuse our cocktails about like, four days ago. And this tea, we got it from Cha Cha Tea um, on Days Road. We, um, they're our uh, main tea supplier and we got most of our amazing tea from them. So we have our uh, Thai Quang Yin from them and we have this um, awesome Earl Grey tea from them and also um, our matcha powder. And yeah, make sure you visit them. The, the little store is so cute and so nice. And it's really um, a good place to uh, shop for your holiday gifts and that. So um, first you need a tablespoon of Earl Grey and 500 ml of gin for, infuse, uh, for infusion and you want it to be infused for about four days. Then you get your Earl Grey gin here. So to make the cocktail, um, you first need a flute right here. Um, I prefer a chill flute, but this flute is not chilled here. Um, I'm just gonna um, put it here. And you also need a shaker. So like the last cocktail, I'm gonna be shaking most of my ingredients except the sparkling wine. You don't wanna shake your sparkling wine. Um, so first, you need um, one ounce of your Earl Grey infused gin. And then you want half ounce of your lemon juice. You can use bottled lemon juice or freshly sweet lemon juice. We um, we use uh, we only use freshly uh, sweet lemon juice, and all our lemons are from our local supplier called Diodato. Uh, lemon is probably like all the citrus are probably the only thing that we can't really source local because they're not suitable for the climate. So um, yeah, here's our lemon. And okay, so you need half ounce of your lemon juice. Okay. And now you have five ounce, uh, you want a half ounce of your simple syrup. Then um, you can top it up with some ice. and shake it.
We strain our lemon juice and um, tea infused gin, so um, you don't need to um, strain it if you strain it at the beginning. But um, if you don't strain your gin, um, then I recommend um, you will use one of these strainer and just strain it and pour it into the flute. Okay, and the last step would be just topped up with your sparkling wine. You want to tilt the glass a little bit so you can pour it in nicely. Okay. Then for garnish, we have a nice and long citrus peel that I'm gonna twist it to make it nice and pretty. Okay, and here's your Earl Grey French 75. Okay, so next I'm gonna be showing you guys my favorite uh, holiday mocktail. Uh, so today I'm gonna be doing uh, ginger syrup with you first, and then I'm gonna turn it into ginger ale, and also a cranberry ginger ale just for the holiday. So here I have a uh, um, ginger. Um, so what you need for this recipe is ginger, some um, sugar here, and a little bit water. Um, I won't be uh, demoing the boiling part here because we cannot use stove. <laughs> so I'm just gonna be showing you guys like all the ingredients I need. Um, and I already have a ginger syrup pre-made. And I'm gonna be using that for the mocktail. So first you need a, if you're at home, first you need a pot and, and then you want to peel your ginger. You don't want to keep the skin on. The skin brings the bitterness of the ginger. So you want to peel your ginger skin. The best way I found to peel a ginger skin is just use a spoon. Like just gently peel it. Again, as I mentioned, um, most of our veg are from um, uh, local suppliers. Our main veg supplier in town is called um, Main Street Urban Farm. Um, Tim from Main Street Urban Farm, he's very nice and he's, he's also, um, you can also see him at the Farmer's Market, the Memorial Farmer's Market. Uh, I believe right now they're online, but he used to be at the Farmer's Market every Sunday. Um, and that's how we uh, met Tim and uh, how everything got started. And um, yeah, so he uh, basically delivered to us every week with his uh, fresh produce. He has a um, small farm um, in Kingston. Um, about um, five to seven minutes away from the restaurant and he always does his bike delivery so he would have his little bike and a little trailer behind it and we always um, get a um, lot of stuff from him his, his vegetables are so pretty and so nice uh, if you have been to the restaurant before you probably will see um, like you probably have seen some of the um, uh, the vegetables we use. Um, one of my favorite is called the watermelon um, radish. Um, when you cut it open, you can literally see the pink and the green and everything in the watermelon radish and it's so juicy and just so nice. We use a lot for our garnish at the restaurant. And also uh, purple radish is one of the things I really like from him. And his cilantro is always amazing. They are like very concentrated in flavors and um, it's very nice. So if you have a chance um, to see him at the farmer's market, um, yeah I would say um, just try some stuff from him. Um, it's very nice. And you can also, I believe you can also order it um, online uh, through the Memorial Market website. So yeah. <laughs> okay so I have my ginger mostly 
peeled. You don't need a lot. You only need um, two tablespoons of uh, grated ginger. I'm not sure if you can see me. I'm gonna put the pot on the side. So I have my little bowl here. And I'm gonna be grating the ginger. So you need a, a grater or a microplane. And just grate it like that. If you're doing a large batch, you can also use a Vitamix or a food blender. Um, it just makes it so much easier than grating it by hand. So you want your ginger to look like this, nice and fine. See, like this kind of texture. And then you want to combine everything together. So first you need, um, I'm only going to be doing half batch here, but um, you will need two tablespoons of your freshly grated ginger. Two tablespoon, um, tablespoons, and you will also need one cup of sugar. And half cup of your water. Stir them together and put it on your heat. So it looks like this. And after you cook it on your heat for about, I'll say I cook mine for about like 10 to 15 minutes until everything is dissolved. You want it to keep it covered, keep it steeped for about an hour. And then um, you want to strain it because you have a lot of um, uh, gingers in there. So you do want to strain it. Um, and um, I keep mine in a little mason jar like this and they usually last um, between like one to two weeks. You, you do want to use them um, um, fresh though. They are purposeful items. Okay, I'm gonna put my cutting board on the side. So after I have your ginger syrup, I'm gonna be making a ginger ale. You want um, to have a tall, nice glass, and, okay, and you can choose to chill your glass first, or um, like in the fridge, or chill it with ice. I always chill my glass, and after you chill your glass, you need one and a half ounce of your freshly made ginger syrup here. Top it up with uh, sparkling water. We make our fresh sparkling water in house. We have this little machine, just like a twist on. You want to give it a nice stir. 
but not too much. <laughs> it has uh, sparkling water in it, so you definitely don't want to stir it too much. I'll say stir it until like you don't see a chunk of syrup at the bottom. It's kind of like nice and soft color. trying to uh, freeze them and dry them um, just to see which one will do better because you know the flower season is almost towards the end okay, here and if you want a variation of your ginger ale you can also make a cranberry ginger ale here this is our freshly made cranberry juice so for the cranberry ginger ale you need two ounces of cranberry juice. You can also use a store-bought. I like my fresh cranberry juice. It was cranberry season, so we just stock a lot of cranberries in the restaurant and freeze them. And this, uh, I made it with one part um, cranberry, uh, one part water, and um, a little bit um, uh, sugar to taste, and also add a splash of uh, lemon juice and uh, orange juice in here. So it's nice and tart. Okay, so one your cranberry juice in here. Okay, then if you want a, like a more gingery drink, you can you do a one and a half ounce of ginger syrup. But I want mine to be more cranberry, so I do um, an ounce of ginger syrup here. These are so red. Let me see. <laughs> right here. Okay. And let's help it up with ice. Okay. And same thing, um, have the sparkling water. I love to hear the fizz. Okay. And again. You do wanna stir it gently. A metal straw. And you can choose to garnish with some uh, frozen or fresh cranberries, or you can also do a uh, crystallized ginger. It's very nice. So today I'm going to be doing um, some cranberries. So uh, 
but that's it for today, and I hope you guys like it. Um, hope everybody have a safe and a uh, great Christmas holiday, and um, I'll see you guys at the restaurant.